Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks a lot for uh, tuning in, I guess. <laughs> so um, today we wanted to talk a little bit about how we budget the Unimog build because you guys probably see us just um, stuffing around with our truck and <laughs> we're not really working or I don't know, and you're probably like, how are these guys doing this, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So we thought we would talk about that a little bit, might maybe answer a few questions you might or might not have. And wanted to talk to you a little bit about our time frame because we've had a few people being like, like this build seems to be taking a while what's Ooh. going on and um, yeah there's a little bit to it so yeah that's the the purpose of today's video so just to make it clear we are actually working full-time on the unimog build and full-time with youtube so we are considering ourselves now like as a small business and we are putting all our energy and all our resources basically into the Unimog build. Everything aside, what you see on YouTube is 1% of what goes into YouTube, like especially Ange admin wise. And, a, and it's hard to describe because a lot of people come along like, oh man, you, you guys make it look pretty easy. I'm keen to do YouTube next year and maybe become a full-time YouTuber. It's, as everything in life, it's really not that simple <laughs> and it's not real easy and you have to be regular and yeah, it's, it, it's basically a pain in the ass. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, yeah, just wanted to go over a few things with that. Now our budget on the Unimog total that Ange and I have to put into this thing before basically our ship has sunk is 90k, so 90,000 Australian dollars. That is everything we have in the world, including whatever possessions we can sell, <laughs> including the general, the Jeep. So, um, yeah. So obviously it is a bit tricky to come up with a number when you start a build because we've never done that before. So we basically look into our savings, look into our current income and our possessions. So this is what we come up with that number. It might be less, it might be more, time will tell. Yeah, and then, and if we do spend that much money on the Unimog, we're basically dead broke and we'll probably have to maybe do some uh, short but hard farm work or something to get a bit of cash back into the system. Yeah, so right now it's currently May. We have started to build around mid-January, so it's been roughly a little bit less than four months. And if we look back, we've done quite a lot, especially on the outside of the Unimog. And it's only now that we're going to start to do the internal feed mm. out as soon as we get the mug back, basically. Yeah, so I kind of, I, I kind of say this to myself that we've, we're future-proofing the vehicle by most of the stuff we've done so far. We want to think of this as at least our 10-year uh, roadmap for our life going forward is this Unimog. So this is very much our house. And whether we can travel around the world due to COVID or not is another matter, but no matter what, we're going to live in this thing. So we got no other houses, no other properties <laughs> earning us money or anything like that. This is our house. Yeah, we're doing a lot of work on it. It looks like everything's really slow. We feel like it's going pretty slow as well because mainly it's all to do with this panel manufacturer so we don't have our hands on the mog at the moment it's been three weeks it feels like three Forever. months <laughs> so and it's looking like potentially it might even not be ready until next week which would be four weeks so in a nutshell it's a much more complicated build process than what the guy is normally used to and what people that we've seen you know on youtube or whatever do with their trucks because the box is being built on the back of the Unimog, which is already huge. So that's why Ange and I couldn't do it ourselves. No. We don't have the facilities, we don't have the manpower, or the tools, or I don't even know where we would begin <laughs> trying to put a box together on the back of that Unimog. Yeah. So, um, and it's such an important part of the build. It's the most expensive part of the build, yeah. is, and like the foundation. So if this doesn't go to plan, this mm. is like... And if, if Ange and I, and I just reckon it would cause so many arguments, I mean, the stress levels would just skyrocket. Like I don't, you can probably tell in videos, I don't deal that well with stress and it all goes to hell, but I'll get the job done and then afterwards I'm like, yeah, I probably could have been a little bit uh, more chilled about that process. So I don't really want to do that with the foundation of this build. Yeah. So overall, the timeline initially was three to four months. We soon realized that this is not realistic. <laughs> Mm. And obviously with like COVID delays and all that kind of thing. So now we're aiming to be done before the end of the year. So before like summer in Australia, basically. So mm. 
And Potentially go even faster. Like it's it's hard to really yeah, predict. We've never done anything like this. We don't know many people that have, and so we it, we're actually finding it really hard to come up with a time frame. To be honest, I would say also because it is such a large project, it's probably one of those ones that you can keep finding stuff to do for years. <laughs> so I've said end of the year. That's the no cutoff. No matter what it is. And that also, not just financially, but also for Ange and our mental health. Mm. Like, and it's hard to, to say this, and we sound like absolute flogs, but we're really struggling being stuck inside. Not a lot to do sometimes with our hands, like um, on the actual Unimog, especially right now. And um, we're not finding it an enjoyable process at all. And, you know, we don't have family here. We don't really have many friends in Perth. So um, suddenly going from a whole year on the road, seeing the most beautiful stuff Australia has got to offer, you know, going up with the sun, falling, you know, like just having that day night cycle. And it was, it was very primitive. Simple, yeah, simple living. Very simple living. And we've now gone back to <laughs> living in a city with we're not without income is abysmal and we just don't feel like we fit into a city no. anymore so we're just hankering to get back out so we'll do some trips in the unimog as soon as we possibly can and hopefully we can survive and then um, give us a little boost to get back yeah. into it and head back on the road full yeah. time. Really. and then and we've got some ideas like if, if stuff starts to really drag we'll do a really big trip and end up somewhere else in the country and do a little bit on the build and then carry on yeah. or something along those lines so we don't have to be um, stationed here but yeah it's, it's just tricky it's a big vehicle to, you can't work on it in a driveway do you know what I mean yeah. so our main source of income at the moment is with YouTube that's you guys <laughs> so thank you <laughs> yeah so YouTube is quite hard to predict uh, obviously like the revenue that you're gonna get it's gonna depend on the number of views and how many videos we put out per month but since the start of the build, roughly, we are looking between $2,500 and $3,000 Australian per month, which is amazing, especially for build videos who would have yeah, yeah. never thought. Because <laughs> when I think of that, I'm like, man, we're making money off YouTube. Sick. This is like a lifelong goal, which it wasn't. But um, it's it goes so far. It's, it's mental. But at the same time, that's our job. So if you compare that to most of your guys jobs it's nothing and we are a couple so we share this income mm. so if you split that by like by half it's actually not that much considering the amount of work we put into it but we're still in a lucky position where that allows us to work on the mock full time so it is quite really convenient right now for our situation yeah it's an interesting one the youtube because it's a little bit like a catch-22 right it's too much money to turn your back on and be like nah let's just not focus on this too much and we'll get a little part-time job while we do the build mm. it's gotten to that point where it's like no this is sort of working but we really need to like keep cracking at it to grow that mm -hmm. income on YouTube mm -hmm. so and please be aware of how much goes into the behind the scenes of YouTube 99% of it is not what you see mm -hmm. on YouTube especially like Ange admin wise there's a lot to it you've got to understand how the algorithms work, the analytics try work. To. <laughs> it's very much Angie's 24 seven job. For me, I'm a bit more focused on the build and I'm just a little bit lazier when it comes to social medias. Yeah, so with the YouTube revenue that we earn, obviously it allows us to pay for like a monthly bill. So right now we are paying a rent. Uh, we've got obviously the car insurances, we've got our software, we've got our food. So mm -hmm. most of that money goes into that. And then obviously if we've got any remaining money from that, it goes straight into the build. So yeah. we're not actually really profitable or anything. No. It just no. get reinvested straight away. Yeah. All right, so the way YouTube works and how we get monetized from that is, you know those pesky ads that turn up like in the middle of the video that you can skip and they're just a pain in the butt? So basically that's Google. So those are Google ads. Advertisers pay Google to put that into the YouTube video. So we don't select what ads turn up. Yeah, sorry if you get some random ones. Yeah, so you'll get <laughs> random ones that Google thinks will work for you and your target audience, I guess. You're, yeah. So Ange can put whereabouts in the video they are, 
and a lot of YouTubers don't do that. So it'll just pop up in the middle of someone talking and you'll try and do it between so the scenes. So they doesn't interrupt the flow as yeah. much as I can. So there's, there's just so much behind the scenes to it. Now, when you skip an ad, we don't get the revenue from whatever that advertiser was. So they've put a budget, given that budget to YouTube and YouTube pumps those out to people it thinks may click on those ads. But even just by watching the full ad, we will get a few cents or a dollar. I don't even yeah, know exactly how quantify. much it is. <laughs> yeah. And obviously there's a fine line between having too many ads, not having enough ads, having non skippable ads, you'll get banners. It's really complicated and we don't even fully understand it at all. All we know is if you skip the ad, which I mean, I do that as well, but Help I try it. not to as often as I can, that YouTube doesn't then get paid for that ad. So you've, you directly influence how much we earn by the amount of ads you'll sit through basically. So it, it's weird and, and I don't like it, but think of it like TV, your normal standard cable TV or whatever, mm. you've got ads and you have to watch them, you can't skip them. And that's why the TV is free, right? So it's very similar to YouTube with that. Now it's kind of like one of those things where it's a necessary evil for us, unfortunately. And um, yeah, it is what it is, but that's, that's how people earn money on YouTube. Now our next main source of income is a website called Patreon or Patreon. <laughs> and all it is is it's a separate website to YouTube and it's kind of, it's crowdfunding in a nutshell. It's been around for a while now, made famous by a few big YouTube channels like Sailing La Vagabond, which we love by the way. <laughs> um, so with Patreon, we can decide what we offer to someone who wants to sign up and you can either do pay per creation, so that would be for us, we release a weekly video and you, and someone who signed up would have to pay per video. We didn't do that, we just do a per monthly yeah. thing. So it's really straightforward, you just go on there and you pledge a certain amount, we, we can set up some tiers kind of thing from a really small amount, like a few dollars, to say $40 per month. And then we have how many patrons? We've got like... Right now, like a, just over like 40 patrons? Yeah, like 40 patrons. So That's we've got so 40 amazing. people or 40 couples that are going, right, I really want to support these guys a little bit more. So it's super humbling to us. And then we need to find a way that we can... Give back. Okay. Yeah, give back. <laughs> so some YouTubers won't do anything and it'll just be a way to support a bit more that creator for their videos. Some will do heaps. Um, but they might charge a large amount of money. Mm -hmm. So it might be like private phone calls and things like that. For us, we've found it tricky because um, we don't want to spread our time out more than we can handle. But the main thing is they get some extra content that doesn't make it to YouTube. Because YouTube, you've got to be trick. You've got to be really careful of how long it is. And unfortunately, we have to cut a lot of content yeah. out of every week, out of every video, really. Mm -hmm. And the more used to filming we get, the more we film, and then we get back and we're like, this is like an hour long video. <laughs> we're yeah. taking so much. Well, I mean, we'll often we'll start with a two hour long, two hours of footage. And then we manage to get it to like a twenty, 20 minute format. Yeah, yeah 20, 23 <laughs> minutes. So yeah, there's a lot of work. That's eight hours right yeah. there just doing that so with patrons so per month uh we at the moment roughly are getting around like 500 australian dollars which is amazing it allows us to uh obviously purchase like some uh small items for the build as like modifications so for example for the month of april we got like a reverse camera and as well the run mount like for the cab so we made like a little video we try to be as transparent as possible as mm. well uh, to show what we actually do with that money it just doesn't go just in our yeah, pockets. Yeah, it doesn't go to <laughs> our food, for instance. It actually goes back into the build because that's what um, the patrons want to see, right? That's that's kind of what they see. They don't see us eating peanut butter sandwiches. Really. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that's patron. Um, so that is a huge part of our income. And like YouTube, it kind of gradually grows. Yeah. So it's something that you put time into and you it reach the rewards, I guess, the longer you do it. And then finally, for what income we've, not really income, but what, how we're financing the build is we sold all of the camping gear mm -hmm. off the Jeep. 
Um, so the Jeep, you know, we had put quite a bit of money into rooftop tents, ARB compressor, awning. We sold all that. We were fortunate and because of it being COVID times in mm -hmm. Australia, everyone wants to go money. camping. So we got a decent amount back for the investment we had put into it. Mm -hmm. And as sad as it is, literally this week we sold the Jeep to a young fellow in New South Wales. So we're just organizing that all. We're super gutted. Um, we're stoked that we sold the Jeep because... That'll go a long way with the yeah, build. <laughs> yeah, we have to get that money out, and Ange and I have half and half in, the, in that Jeep. So, and then we haven't decided exactly what we'll do. We might buy like a little runabout car for now that's worth like a few grand, mm -hmm. and then try and sell it for what we bought it for. Um, but that can be a ticking time bomb kind mm -hmm. of thing. So we're not too sure what we'll do with that. We just know, working on the inside of that uni mog by day and then also having it to be our daily driver is going to be a <laughs> real challenge so we may have to buy like a little car but we basically just couldn't keep the jeep because that was by far our largest yeah. investment and as well <laughs> cheeky little placement yeah. um just with the stickers obviously we don't make much money out of it like profit per sticker is supposed to be like around like three dollars or anything mm. because things that you don't consider when you buy a sticker. So we have to pay obviously for the sticker. We have to pay for the commission for the pay heap website where we sell them from. We have to pay commission for PayPal. And then we offer free shipping. So we basically pay for the shipping. So it's like a small way as well to so, yeah, it's obviously like a few bucks. support the build. And for us, obviously it's not much money, but this money goes straight into the build as well. Guaranteed though, this is the best darn sticker in terms of quality <laughs> that you'll ever receive. These things are bulletproof. They're the ones that we had on the side of the Jeep and we pulled them off the other day for selling it. <laughs> we could have stick it somewhere yeah, else. They're perfectly sticky. We're like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> <Do> we <do? laughs> it's been a whole year in the sun and it's like perfect. I don't know what they made of, some sort of nuclear radioactive material <laughs> I would assume. Um, but no, they're really good. So th that's our income. All right, last but not least, the sponsors yeah sponsors <laughs> so that's topic. been a interesting learning curve for us um right so first up you'll see like quite a lot of youtubers or it'll say maybe at the bottom of the video this includes a paid promotion mm -hmm. uh, or just randomly in the middle of the video they'll say this video was brought to you by skillshare <laughs> we really don't want to go down that road for some reason that really bugs me and that you've had to sit through a bunch of Already, ads that yeah. have been spat at you plus you've got a, like a built in ad from the actual YouTuber. I would say it probably pays pretty well. Yeah, we have no idea, so. No, we've got asked for to do a few and then they ask what do you want to charge for that and we just don't even know. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, if you do see one of those ads in our videos, it was either A, we got really desperate and I couldn't make any money selling my body. Or B, or B uh, it was just too much money to refuse. Yeah. But we'd really not, we don't want to go down that road, okay? But, so then you've got companies. Now, for the first time at the start of this build, we were like, right, we're gonna have a pretty unique build and we want to be able to drive all around the world. Let's treat this like a billboard marketing space, mm -hmm. if you will. So Ange and I sat down, we made like a media kit that says all of our like YouTube analytics, our Instagram analytics, stuff that a company may want to know. And we started to approach, and we didn't just send this to everyone, mm -hmm. we approached a select few companies mm -hmm. that we would buy their products no matter what. Yeah, so basically we first like made a list, all right, what are the first items or products that we need for the build at all costs mm -hmm. and then look into which company obviously offer that and this is how we kind of like started to do it yeah so we reached out to just a select few now a good example of a company that we're now working with or worked with is raptor right so Ange and i fronted 1300 dollars uh to raptor coat the entire you know chassis and tray that you saw it was way more than I thought it was going to take. Yeah. In retrospect, I probably should have used maybe some thinners. Just yeah. a little bit of it, just to make it go a bit further, but never mind. So we did all that because we really wanted to. I 
from day dot, I wanted to wrap to coat mm -hmm. um, the, the bottom of the truck. It makes sense for, for, for that purpose. Exactly. So, and I'd always wanted to, kind of since we bought the Unimog, I wasn't going to wrap to coat the cab. I was going to, we were going to pay someone kind of a cheap job to do a vintage Range Rover blue cab shiny. Mm. So, and it would have looked beautiful. But the first track we would have gone down, it would have torn the paint to shreds and it would have just ruined our time off road. Mm. And that happened a few times down south in the Jeep where yeah. the trail was just so, so narrow that you couldn't reverse out of it. And it just tore, started, I shouldn't say it tore it to bits, but it put pinstripes that I then had to um, cut and polish out again and it kind of ugh, just mm, this horrible <laughs> soul tearing noise as you're doing it now so then after that was done we we had had some photos for ourselves and we're like these look really nice let's reach out to Raptor to give us the product to paint the cab in exchange for content you know, like a collaboration yeah, a, a collaboration so none of these companies you don't get anything for free so i think without um, anything in return it's very much a two-way relationship yes. and i think that's the um the problem nowadays people think you just get free products and that's it but there's so much work involved behind the scenes there's a that. lot of work involved it is it is more like a marketing contract mm -hmm. so you actually sign a contract you sign a contract and you have to present a certain amount of content and obviously if something's worth more money you have to do more for it mm -hmm. and that can sometimes be an astronomical amount of work mm -hmm. but for us that is going to go so far because i'm not certain that we can do the build that we want to do in our budget it's a guess it's like a, a hopefully a well-researched yeah. guess so anything that we can have covered by another company in terms of content yeah or discounted as well or discounted yep yeah we then uh, can put that money that would have been spent there into another part of the build or mm -hmm. upgrading a part of the build that we probably couldn't have afforded at this mm -hmm. stage and maybe we would we would have had to have done that down the road so that's kind of what we're doing with certain companies and we're very certain that we do not want to sell ourselves out to any kind of subpar relationships mm -hmm. just to get free gear mm -hmm. we're not at that stage of the build and we're hoping we will never be at that stage of the build where we are like desperate to get something yeah so the content we do for the companies they can use it for their socials for their website like marketing campaigns or anything but whatever goes on our youtube channel we very much make it clear that for us we just want to use the product and just do it naturally like the way we do for mm. anything else we don't want a company to come and tell us what we should do and like give us like very strict guidelines i think it's really bad as well like for yeah, the company and, and, and Ange and i are very honest people we don't want to sit in, sit in front of you guys and and spew some like like sales jargon i'll probably fail at it as well <laughs> oh, yeah i, I don't <laughs> think we would even be able to keep a straight face to be honest so and i'm sure the companies that we've spoken to kind of get that about us as well so we're really fortunate in that the people we have reached out to and maybe working with in the future or, or now or whatever they they know that that's not our style and we just want to show this product is sick and we would buy it anyway or have bought it and got it maybe for a little mm -hmm. bit of a discount um, but we're not going to shove that down your guys throats so we're not going to tell you um this is sponsored content or like it's going to be completely native and um genuine because it is really genuine it may have just helped us out a little bit because we can kind of show to you guys and to people we drive past or hopefully around the entire world right so it's a bit of a no-brainer so this concludes the video if you have any question about any of these categories and our income let us know in the comment We'll probably do like a video in the future when the build progresses a little bit more about like different um, categories and like, you know, being transparent as well with the cost of the build because I'm sure a lot of people are going to ask us that at the end. I'm tracking every single expense, so we'll probably do a video, don't worry. Yeah, I hope you weren't hoping that, that we would uh, tell you some like 
incredible way to make money while traveling on the road <laughs> some sort of like dodgy ponzi scheme or something like that we're not that smart we don't have any investments we don't have any properties this is us putting we're probably idiots Hopping for the best. <laughs> yeah it's a massive gamble where this is our house so we were fortunate enough to have very small house deposits that we are completely putting into this build and hoping we'll make enough money on the way through crowdfunding basically to to succeed with this and uh, and show you guys that it's it is really possible to do but you've got to make a huge sacrifice in terms of other parts of your life we yeah, very much live within our means yeah. and obviously we have to sacrifice other parts but we did play some mini golf the other night and that was probably <laughs> the first time we've gone out and done an activity in the evening in what over a year uh, like it's pretty sad it, like we very much live this lifestyle that we showed you guys on youtube and when you don't see a video we're suffering because it means we're probably not working on the uni morgue we're literally doing research or we're like inside just being like oh my Waiting god where that. is this box kind of stuff so yeah that's us so i hope you got something out of the video <laughs> any questions obviously we love to see the comments sometimes it gets to the point where we've got so many we literally can't write to all of them because they'll disappear down the page and stuff but we do we do end up getting around to reading all of them sometimes it'll be in a few days and then we feel like there's no point replying because we've left it too late or whatever um, but yeah it's so nice to get all those comments from you guys please watch the ads when you can because we get more out of that than people mm -hmm. who subscribe to youtube um, and that's a little bit of a misnomer that I think people don't realize is that if they're subscribed we get paid No, nope, it's just if you watch the ads. It's weird, but that is what it is So thanks so much guys, and we'll see you on the next video whenever that'll be <laughs> <See ya. laughs>